Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast interview. I'm here with Ben Hadley, CEO of Auto Genius, and we're going to be talking about something that every single dealer needs to add into their retail strategy to sell more cars in a digital age. And here's the teaser. How about a 30% increase in conversions with no work from your team? Well, let's dig into that. Ben, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be so, here. So Ben, let's let's dive into Auto Genius. Just let's get a little history. Why uh, why did you create Auto Genius and what's the mission of that organization? So dealers who are not familiar with the name, you know, understand first of all uh, your core culture and vision. Do you remember um Stefan Precup? Yes. Yes. From uh, Stefan was from uh, Reno, right? Yep, Dolan Automotive. Yeah. Um, so you actually had sort of a, a, a part to play here. Um, way back, way, way, way back. Uh, like I'm talking like early website days. Um, you, him, and a few other notables had a cool email thread going on. What's happening sort of in, in automotive. And... So that was sort of dot one. Dot two was uh, when I was uh, had my career at dealer.com. That was my first sort of like tech startup that I was a part of. Fairly early there, we had this really cool thing called the Dealer Council. It was essentially a yes. 20 group. Yeah, that, I remember yeah. it. And, um, and, you know, you have kind of dealer councils now that are a little bit more geared towards like, hey, don't cancel. We're going to put you on the dealer council. <laughs> Kind of what the dealer councils have become. Yeah. But Save the deal. So, yeah. What was so cool about those moments were um, it was this recognition that the dealers oftentimes do know exactly what they want. Uh, they just need some, some someone to give them a voice to go and execute that. And so right. Auto Genius sort of started under that thesis. It was a community first. We're still a community. We have over 3,000 rooftops in a private Slack group. And um, we call this theory market product fit. Rather than product market fit, where you make a product, hope to God the market likes it, then iterate to fit. We're like, no, no, no. Let's just make the market first. We know there's a bunch of people that are insanely intelligent. Like Steph, well, Steph hasn't actually logged in for a minute, but he's in Auto Genius. No, he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's a smart guy. Um, and then we listen to that person and then build, you know, accordingly. It just gives us a higher propensity that we're going to build something that that people actually want to use and um, that are going to be impactful. Uh, and so back in like early COVID days, one of my co-founders, Kevin Gervais, who actually yeah. sort of puts like the genius in auto genius. <laughs> uh, if you've interacted with him, you know what I'm talking sure. about. Sure. Um, he was under like Canada had strict, strict lockdowns. So he was losing his mind. He reached out to me, said, Hey, we should talk about how disconnected all the data is in auto and happy to go down a rabbit hole with anybody. I didn't realize this, but he was actually talking to another of our co-founders, Kyle Monsieur, at the same exact time about the same exact subject. We agreed we should start a company, um, with the sort of compass of a community. And I said, man, we really got to bring in this guy, Kyle. And he said, Monsieur. And I was like, yeah, he's like, I'm already talking to him. I told him yesterday <laughs> we should start. A uh, so, you know, it was a lot of serendipity, um, uh, a lot of destiny kind of lined up to, to make, make all this happen. Yeah. Well, I love the idea of instead of software developers locking themselves in a room and hoping that they got automotive right, they're really birthing these things through the lens of a dealer and their needs. I mean, how many times during COVID was there another digital retailing vendor come to market and, you know, you do a little background. It's like, oh, we're from FinTech. And I'm like, okay, but do you understand automotive? Oh, I mean, like we do FinTech, like for banking and this and that. It, it can't be that different. I'm like, get ready. 
Oh, get ready. Hold on. And I think yeah. for for some degree, this is uh, where Techion has taken uh, a little bit of lumps with their CRM. You know, I think that um, people who are using their DMS like their DMS, people who turn on their CRM, leave it on for a few weeks and then shut that thing down because the needs of the auto dealer from a CRM perspective is very different, right? It's very customized. So, you know, I think they were an example of like, well, listen, we know how to build CRMs. We built it for pharmacy. We built the CRM for e-commerce. Totally. Uh, it can't be that different. Uh, and yet, you know, here they are, um, you know, kind of backpedaling on, you know, the having a one unified suite. And, and I think your approach really is smart, but you, you, you can't have big egos then, Ben, right? I mean, you really have to say, let me be a great listener and then use my tech skills, my entrepreneurial skills to solve problems. Is, is that the approach? I think so. I think it's a little bit like being a translator at the, the UN, you know, you, you realize that like the, um, uh, the folks that are sort of the unsung war heroes are the person that are probably translating <laughs> a message to, you know, I don't know, Vladimir Putin or something. And right. depending on the connotation of their voice, are they yelling? Are they, you know, mm, soft right. or whatever, right? It can have a lot of impact to to the overall meaning of the message and then what is done afterwards. I think, um, you know, actually shout out Pedram Fayed. Uh, he was an early Auto Genius member before we shut it down to just... Uh, dealers only, um, but he's. I think he's helping uh, correct some of the the CRM ship over at Techion. The yeah, he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's super smart. The the problem I keep on seeing is that, um, you know, there is definitely a fundamental reason why something like Salesforce hasn't entered our market That's widespread. Correct. We and need I was, something. I like was just talking to them prior to our call today. Believe really, it. yeah, super yeah. cool. Um, you know, we need something that's like, Hey, this is, this is auto. You need to reflect the pains that we all go through. Um, on the other side, it is sort of shocking that we've gone this many years kind of with technology that is, is almost, we almost went overboard where it's like so custom that you you really limit yourself. I mean, if you were able to to adopt something like Salesforce, think about all of the things in that app marketplace that finally you also get to use. That's right. Yeah, um, you you have the marketing cloud and um, some really really cool integrations. I know that uh, Nate Hollenbach over DG DG has spent a lot of time getting Auto Genius member. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, Salesforce. Uh, in fact, at our upcoming CXO network meeting in Austin, we're going to have Salesforce come and give an updated presentation on their CDP. They were in a few of the RFPs that I was managing for dealer groups, but I never got the impression that they were really clear on what they wanted to do at tier three. Very clear at tier one. Yes. And enterprise, not so clear at tier three. So, um, there's an expectation, right? They think there's like these resources. I've talked to a couple of dealer groups too in the community that, you know, brought them in for a CDP uh, RFP and said, oh man, that's a lot of acronyms, uh, and said, you know, all right, like, you know, what, what can we, what can do we do together? And, you know, we have to, I think it's hard for outside of automotive vendors to, to fully understand that we don't really spell API in our industry, you know, so we support walled gardens. <laughs> yeah. We spell it FTP. Um, right. so, so people come in here going like, all right, yeah, no, it's super easy to set up. All you have to do is just, and we go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. It, Pump the no. brakes here. You want my dev team that doesn't exist. I just got an internet guy a few years ago. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> there's, there's sort of like all these like, um, uh, order of operations that need to happen in order to allow our, our whole industry to evolve. And if you jump the step too much, you actually do more harm than good, I think. 
Yeah, and 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 that's a great introduction into the product that was birthed through the feedback loop. Um, and the context that you shared that it's amazing that in 2024, APIs are still rare. If the APIs exist, they're not robust. Uh, they may not even have a full data set. And there's political reasons for that. Um, yeah. There's obviously political walled gardens. And, and then you have websites, which is the, the product that we're going to talk about today. Um, I wouldn't want to be in the website business. I kind of think it's like a, a little bit of a thankless job, a lot of trouble tickets, um, a lot of support, high turnover at the dealership, uh, margin compression uh, because of OEM managed programs, price caps because of OEM managed programs. And yet we still see um, dealers struggling to get their websites to convert higher. Um, we have more is better instead of less is better in, in design and buttons. And so let's talk about this product that's growing like hotcakes. Uh, just dealers are signing up left and right. So what is Speed Layer and why is it important uh, for dealers today to think about the speed of their websites? Yeah. Um... We'll go back to a little bit of the origin story. Uh, the, the initial thesis that we wanted to conquer was connecting all of the disconnected data in automotive. Okay. And so uh, Kuhn's Automotive Group had reached out to us and thought, hey, we have, a, we have a little bit of a data problem. Can you help? Our CTO, Kevin, flew out there, um, again, for free, because we really didn't think we were going to be a product company. We really just wanted to just do this community uh, and just started like basically was adopted by them into the community or into their dealership almost as an employee. And you know, he wore the shirt, moved car. I mean, he's literally like ingrained for like a week there <laughs> and realized that like, if you think about a website is really a visualization of all your data. The most obvious is an inventory feed. Sure. Right? Like DMS, talks to HomeNet, talks to Viato, whatever, and then publishes. Um, but a staff page is really a visualization of your payroll. So maybe you have ADP, person gets hired, person gets fired or promoted to a customer, maybe changes roles. That really should feed to like a staff page, right? Yeah. That would make everybody's life a lot more efficient. Um, but when everything gets disconnected, you also have a speed problem. Uh, because you have a hard time sort of visualizing things without duplicating things. So what tended to be the um, easiest path forward for our industry was rather than connect payroll through an API or something to a staff page, what we decided to do instead was say like, hey, someone go and copy and paste. Someone's hired, someone's fired. Go get rid of that guy, go add that guy, you know. And so much of our job as marketers ends up being sort of like, um, running back and forth where APIs should be connected. That's right. Talking. Uh, so we worked with Coons. We launched Coons.com as a, really as an experiment. Um, and that was probably, no, for sure is the, was the fastest website in automotive at the time. Um, you can still go there. It does things like passes core web vitals. Um, but the real headline to that was after a month, we had increased their conversions by 600% mm. after two months, 1400%. Wow. So they went from an average load speed on mobile of 26 seconds, um, sometimes 30 to under three seconds. Mm. So as you basically speed up a website, Google will tell you that for every 0.1 seconds, we remove off of load time, just 0.1, you increase conversion by 7%. So that's an e-commerce 2017 stat that we weren't sure would actually apply, right? If it applies to toilet paper in 2017, does it, is it still relevant to a $50,000 right, because, because, you know, we don't transact on the website, but we surely do collect information or conversion through 
a phone call, lead form, chat, or text. Yep. But was the thesis, if we could speed up the website, uh, it would convert higher or is just, hey, this is a problem. We should just speed up the websites because Google recommends it. It's better for SEO and such. So what did you see the conversion or was that like an unintended consequence? No, that was that was pretty core to the, the initial thesis. Okay. We thought, hey, if we make this thing way faster, we'll double the conversions. The surprise was really going 600% and 1400%. That was like, whoa. We didn't realize it was that that impactful. Um, but actually it followed the exact same stats. So if you do the rough math for every second or for every second you would eliminate, that's uh, 70%. For every 10 seconds, 700%. We eliminated about two, 20 seconds off of load. That's the 1400%. So it, the base math actually penciled out. Um, uh, which was remarkable that, you know, even for something like a $50,000 car, you were seeing that impact. The crazier thing was the close rate on their group website is now the number one cl uh, closing lead. It, so that rose 53%. Um, so what we actually saw is that speed allowed people to engage with the entire website. And like dealers will see this all the time where someone leaves a lead which really signifies they want to buy from you, but doesn't necessarily signify they want to buy that car. Because if you check your CRM and look at how many people leave a lead for a Prius and then go drive away with a used Cadillac Escalade, it's shockingly high. How many people don't buy the car they leave right. a lead on? That's correct. Um, part of that is because when they're qualifying themselves, the website journey is so frustrating that they're like, okay, I, I am going to buy from you, but just like, let me get into the store so I can see. And when they do that, if the salesperson's on their game, then if, but if they're on their game, they've pulled up that Prius. They've learned everything they can about that Prius. They're excited to sell you that Prius. And then the person's head is on a swivel and goes, whoa, you guys got a Cadillac Escalade and that's actually a pretty <laughs> good deal. You know what? My wife would actually laugh that they have that. And you're now you're fully unprepared. You have, you know, oh, I got to go find someone that can help me sell this right. thing. Um, and so we're also seeing a five times, well, four times, four to five times lift in total VDP views when we own the entire uh, experience and we do something like Coons. So let's talk about yeah. the core issue behind speed. I, I wrote an article yesterday on LinkedIn, just talking about, as I'm talking to marketing managers and maybe in the auto genius community, this has come up. As inventory turn rates have slowed down, more cars are on the lot, uh, floor plan costs. It seems like marketing managers are getting flooded with, hey, let's add another pop-up, let's add another button, let's add another tool, like we need more leads. So yes. let's just, and so when you add one iframe and then another iframe and another iframe and another iframe, so the average dealer website has five iframes. Okay. So mm. digital retailing is in an iframe, trade is in an iframe, service schedulers in an iframe, a finance uh, app is in an iframe, a yep. soft credit pull is in an iframe. And of course, chat uh, or text may be in an iframe as well. So you have all these um, different vendors that are pulling data from their servers. And it's really a rat's nest, right? You would say, right, um, yeah. uh, this week, uh, this uh, you were just at the Kane event and um, uh, I heard that was a, a wonderful event. Uh, yeah. Dealer reprocess uh, announced their Everest platform. And, and along the lines, like, look, if we have our digital retailing tool and our chat and, we, and we're not using iframes and it's all native, we can optimize uh, the, the load time, the customer experience. But most dealers don't have that luxury. Right. And so when you saw what happened with Coons, knowing that you really created a ground, ground up build for this website, what made you say, hey, I, I might not be able to, or I don't want to go into rebuilding every website in automotive retail, but what we've learned about how things load and the speed, is mm. that when the, like the, the trigger went, hey, if we could get half the performance 
we got from Coons without having to redo the website, but using our tech, yep. um, dealers would benefit. So, so what was the pivot that said this could actually be a product to yeah. solve load times across the whole automotive ecosystem? Uh, so Coons was sort of a proof of concept, but, but wasn't built necessarily to scale. Um, so we had to replatform. We redid the code base, and and really some of the things that we were doing that that really hadn't been done certainly in auto, but most of the world was um, there's a thing called the worker threads, which are basically almost like processors that run in your browser to load uh, the web or load content of the site. Um, most people limit themselves to one single worker thread, and we had figured out how to one. Um, have the entire website cached at the DNS level. So there's no servers. Mm. So you're, it's actually the closest thing to the browser. Um, and what that really looks like is like if yahoo.com was a client of ours, rather than the normal thing, which is your browser says, hey, I want to go to yahoo.com. Then a DNS says, oh, that's really 192.168.1.1, some IP address. And that information you want is over on an AWS server or Google Cloud server, some 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 server over here. And then by the way, we also have all this JavaScript and they want to bring their friends over. And those are on all these other servers. And we also have these pictures and they're all on these servers. Um, ours just said, hey, DNS, you know, we want to load this website. And the DNS literally looks in its pocket in the cache and just goes, oh yeah, I already have a copy of it. Here you go. That was part of the speed boost. The other part was um, figuring out these worker threads so that it's almost like going from like a Pentium one processor to like a quad core, right? You're all of a sudden able to hyper thread more. Good analogy, good analogy for yeah. old school chip guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then we replatform, got a, got a little bit more clever. Kevin, my CTO, will not rest until the entire internet is solved for folks um, that are on the spectrum that have accessibility needs because he himself need, has accessibility needs. So he has this relentless pursuit of not just performance, but of compatibility. And so we replatformed not once, not twice, but in the last year we've la replatformed four times. G yeah, That's Gen expensive. 4, it's crazy how much we've leveraged ourselves. <laughs> Gen 4 is um, Gen 4 is 50 times faster and actually has cross compatibility with the entire internet. So there's two options with Gen 4. We can do a full site where um, we basically place a tag and, and rather than loading sites, we stream them. Um, we are not just balance loading like we were doing before with just worker threads. We're doing that plus we just submitted for patent this entirely new way of building for the internet which is balance loading protocols. So most websites, actually almost all websites, all the internet, um, use HTTP protocols, mm -hmm. which yeah. means that there's like a server and there's a lot of fetches going on between the browser and that server. But, but something like this Zoom call, this Zoom call has actually opened up a socket between you and I, That's kind right. of a private tunnel. Just, and just streaming. And we're camera. just streaming back and forth in real time. Yeah. So we actually convert things like HTTP, HTTP protocols over to the other sockets that are more efficient and then stream them back into the browser, which is just at least removes one server hop, yeah. but also makes it way more real time. That unlocks things like personalization in real time. Mm, that also unlocks on. things. Yeah. Like, like what are these CDPs going to finally be able to do? Talk directly to, to something yep. and change it. Um. And so speed layer is at, and our, our gen four are actually the same exact thing. They're just, they're, they're from the same exact family. Speed layer is just taking a portion of that, uh, and then adding it to an existing site, like your dealer.com, your dealer on your dealer process, your dealer spot, your dealer, whoever, uh, and then, uh, basically speeding up those existing sites. Um, not to the same degree that we can do when it's all from on a us. full rebuild. Right. That's right. correct but still and, significantly and enough. So 
you know, being mindful of OEM programs, right? And who gets allowed to be in an OEM program, any dealer, any site can use speed layer. And mm -hmm. when a dealer, it, let's, let's reset and just remind everyone, uh, all of the testing shows that when the website loads better, it's better customer experience. When it's a better customer experience, people stay on the page, uh, on the website longer. They look at more cars, they convert higher. That's the base that has been proven. So if a, if a, a dealer watching this podcast says, okay, I get it. Um, the data is there. You've done this now on hundreds of, of websites. What, are you seeing on an existing DDC or dealer inspire or dealer on platform you put in speed layer? Um, what does their load time typically go down and what type of conversion lift are they seeing on a, like, let's just say like, Brian, I can go to bank that they're going to see this much of an increase in conversion. Bank. They're going to see a 30% increase in conversion. Wow. Bank. Um, load speed. Uh, we judge ourselves under the Google Core Web Vital Metrics. The Web Vital Metrics, um, and more specifically the mobile ones, because probably 70% of your traffic is coming from mobile at this point. Sure. Those are throttled to 4G internet connection. Okay. That's what Google cares about. And there, it's also under an Android, like a mid-tier mid Android device. The reason for this, and this is why I think the problem has gone so, for so long uncorrected, is because 30% of the United States population, 30% of us, that is their primary internet connection. A mid-tier Android phone that is on 4G you know, that is like DS, not even like slightly slower than DSL speeds. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, most of us that are listening to this podcast that work in this industry, we have great livelihoods and we probably have one gig internet at home. And uh, we probably have one of the latest iPhones, if not a couple yeah. generations ago, right? We, we probably live pretty decent lives as far as our tech stack. Um, it's really important to note that a lot of America does not. Mm, that's true. And so... That's why Google kind of uses that as the lowest common denominator. If you can make it great for them, you're going to make it great for everybody so, else. Too. So there's a good chance that general managers, dealer principals are always testing in ideal conditions. So they don't even see the problem on their own website. A hundred percent. But also um, the dev teams in our industry, right? The, the, the whole entire stack is generally going, eh, this looks good. You know, it's not bad. It's pretty fast. Right. But if you go to PageSpeed Insights, like whoever's listening, you Google PageSpeed Insights and you throw um, your, uh, it'll ask you for a URL, put an example, like your VDP in there, you're probably scoring a 26 out of 100 under Google Core Web Vitals. Um, and your probably biggest culprits are largest contentful paint, which is the largest item to sort of show up visually. Uh, when it's loaded, and that's normally on a VDP going to be an image of the vehicle. Um, and what I can equate it to is if I talk to a general manager and we role played this real quick, uh, Brian, you'll be um, you'll be the customer looking for a Toyota Camry, and I will be the salesperson. So just give me a call. Say, hey, uh, my name is Brian, and I need to talk to somebody about a Toyota Camry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't have to count to 26, which is the 26 seconds is the average load speed under Google Core Web Vitals. I don't need to talk. I don't need to count all the way to 26 to for everybody to understand how painful right. it would be to wait in silence for that long, right? Any general manager would immediately fire a salesperson if it took them 26 seconds to say, yes, we do have a Toyota Camry inside. <laughs> but this is the internet experience, right? Mm, that's so white good. screen, so good. white screen, white screen, white screen, slowly showing an image, finally. Okay, now you have to think, who, call, who made you give me that call? 
probably Mark Zuckerberg or Sundar Pichai, right? Google or Facebook. You probably spend a bunch of money to them and say, hey, Mark, could you get a guy in my market that is interested in a Camry to give me a call? And he goes, sure, just give me a few bucks. Mark is, Mark's algorithms are great. They're, they're not failing us right now. Yeah, yeah. He's doing fine. He's freaked out though, when he finally gets you the call or the email or the lead submit, but, and it takes that long for the page to load. Right. That's where he's freaking out. So we have an enormous amount of wasted ad spend right now, actually just because of this problem. It's a good point. Good point. So, so this is a universal fix to an age old problem that dealership websites have always been, Hey, they look good, but there's no problem. But now today, as we start to look, we can't have identity resolution between all these iframes very easily. These iframes slow down uh, load speed. And so the days of just throw anything on the website and everything is fine is clearly broken thinking because yeah. when you speed up all of that tech, they get a 30% increase. And today, uh, I mean, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but there isn't a marketing manager that I have spoken with in the last 60 days who hasn't said, man, all my boss wants, all the GMs wants is more leads, more leads, more leads. So uh, instead of spending another 5,000 or 10,000 on Google or Facebook to send people to a disappointing experience, <laughs> Yeah, you're just saying, look, guys, you're spending 10, 20, 50,000 bucks a month on marketing and driving people to a bad experience. Um, you may not think it because you're using the best iPhone with a high speed internet. But um, if I if I add speed layer, you're going to get exactly what you want more leads. It almost sounds like 100% close rate. How are dealers, you were just at the Kane event, um, how are dealers responding to this message, especially in today's economy where the thing they need more of is, you know, swings at the plate to move the inventory? Yeah, it's um, it's been insane. I do, I do want to give a special shout out though or clarification. It is... The, 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 it's actually no one's real fault here. Like the website providers, a clean, if you just launched any, pick, pick pretty much any of them, if you just launched them clean tomorrow, they'd actually do pretty well. Yeah. The problem ends up being is that the only way that we can get chat is at bolt on some JavaScript. The only way we can get a shopping cart digital return is bolt on some JavaScript. The only way that we can have... So as you bolt on all these things, that's where the speed decrease is going. And yes. the, the funny thing is, is that we're generally doing these because we want to increase conversion where it's actually hurting us a bit. That, that, not, it's a, not the wrong move, but <laughs> right. it is kind of ironic. As right? unintended consequences. Yes. And, and then they add, oh, look, let's add Capital One. Who knows... Yeah. What yeah. that iframe is doing, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing at least five bolt-on products per oh, dealership easily. website easily. Uh, as a minimum, yeah. and this is a turnkey solution. So, Ben, uh, if a dealer's watching and says, "I want a thirty percent increase in leads." Yeah. Uh, you support all the website platforms that are on the marketplace today. How long does it take to get installed? Is this something that uh, requires a special ticket from the website company? Is it something uh, that you you do for the dealer? How does it work? Because yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think I, I I don't think there's a dealer listening who s would say I, I wouldn't want a thirty percent increase in consumer contact information that I could work in my CRM. Yeah, um, I, I, we really haven't run into the, I, I think this has a 98% close rate at this point. It's like kind of ridiculous. Right. Um, to answer your last question, like the only problem is the the wait list that we have created is getting pretty overwhelming. So uh, um, thanks to you, uh, last uh, conference we did, we had 
in a week, 386 dealers signed up. Come on. When we did Kane, 62 dealers signed up. Crazy. Right. Um, and so we are basically attacking these in tranches. The way we do this is we actually give you 30 days absolutely for free. And we do a concurrent A-B test. 50% of your tap traffic is going to get exposed to speed layer. So you can see the conversion rate that is established with 50%. Wow, that's traffic. so cool. The same exact time, you have two visitors. One will see speed layer, one will not. The other 50% will just see you the know, regular the website. Group. Yep. Yep. The regular website. And then after, after the 30 days, you decide, yep, I want it. Or nope, I want to go back to slow. And there are certainly dealers out there that, you know, I was talking to Bentley and Rolls Royce store. Nope, you don't probably need, I mean, different client, you probably don't need us. Um, and, you know. but also, here's one thing that I know about like Bentley and Rolls Royce stores they don't have five iframes. Yeah, I mean, there's and, a there's they, a weird they, difference too. Is yeah, like, I mean, like you go to a Bentley store and it's like fill out a form and we'll get in touch with you. You know, it's not like payment calculator or trading. Totally. I mean, not to get in the nitty gritty, but like on the other end, if you're like a Ferrari store and your website takes 26 seconds to load and you're right. talking about going to zero to sixty and three, there's yeah. kind of a mismatch of brand. No, here. no, to totally. So, agree. I yeah. totally agree. But so what you're saying, you know, for a normal volume store, you know, not high volume, just normal volume. Hey, we're selling a hundred cars a month, uh, uh, up to a super power store. I mean, it's an amplifying effect. You know, mm -hmm. if, a, if a dealer's getting 200 leads, they're getting another 60. If they're getting 800 leads, they're getting another 240 in today's economy. That's a pretty amazing value proposition. Yeah, and if you think about it, you're getting higher quality leads too. The um, the problem ends up being is that, you know, again, back to Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. Hey, Facebook, send me some traffic. The amount of traffic that is high quality that is becoming a bounce or, or excuse me, a non-engagement mm -hmm, uh, under mm -hmm. the new metrics, a non-engaged uh, user is so significant, but that is actually your lowest hanging fruit. Those initial folks that Mark goes and finds are the people that he's like, yeah, no, they're going to buy tomorrow. And then they turn into this bounce. The problem ends up being, and you were alluding to it before, is that most people today solve the problem by spending or throwing more money at it. That actually gives Mark Zuckerberg and Google and Facebook and everybody a way different problem because at some point you've given them so much money that they're like, I've talked to all the car buyers. Um, but there's this guy over here and he seems to like tires and bikes, bikes and tires. That's kind of similar to this used Civic. Yeah. You know what? If you pay me not just $3, but if you pay me like eight, I'll send this irrelevant, lower quality traffic to you. <laughs> and so then you have an even bigger fall off yeah. on conversion. Yeah. So it's really this like, I mean, it really is as simple as the mousetraps kind of fundamentally broken. Um, but the cheese isn't uh, that we're solving. It does have a lot of repercussions, though, um, after it's solved. Well, that's amazing. Well, I love the fact that into this economy, um, there are some turnkey solutions that provide some immediate relief. Uh, obviously, um, a future state would be website platforms that had more integrated tools um, that weren't uh, a series of bolt-ons. Uh, I know that um, it seems to be a movement in the industry that um, I think maybe you've highlighted. Um, but for these, these legacy website companies to fix their code and come out with, uh, it's not happening anytime soon. And um, it, yeah, Definitely. this is, they did just have way too much infrastructure built around old tech. I mean, yeah, that's the change just... management is actually not so much that none of these companies couldn't afford that. Um, and don't actually, you know, we have partners already at these website companies that are actively high, trying to place our tag into the right spot. They want to solve this problem. I think on their end, you know, to sympathize with them, it's like, you, if you 
really hypercorrected this um, in a different way, you would also be saying, hey, I want all of my account managers to learn a new platform. I want all my support folks to learn a new platform. I want all of them to call the dealers that are used to logging into this thing to teach them a new platform. Yeah. So it's, it's a massive yeah. lift. Um, and so we just obviously see this as way easier. Right. Um, ben, if a dealer wanted to put you at your word, uh, get speed layer installed, do that split test to see the lift. Uh, what's the best website to go to? And yeah. what is the wait time? Like if they wanted to go, um, what let's set some expectations. I know you, you, you just got flooded from the cane event. Um, yeah. You're coming down the DMSC and Austin. I think dealers right. are going to love seeing some of this comparison data up close, um, but what's the best website and and what's the general expectation you're uh, telling dealers? Because I know it's such high demand. Yeah, so go to autogenius.io. If you scroll to the bottom of that, you can apply to be in the community. Um, autogenius.io slash speed layer. Uh, and you can sign up for the wait list. Um, caveat is we want you to be part of the community though. So. You might as well just fill, uh, fill out the application um, because we're we're treating them first. They're getting priority. Right. I love it. Love it. Well, Ben, I'm looking forward to your uh, presence at DMSC. This is the Davos uh, destination of automotive marketing technology. I love that. Um, and we are really excited about the content this year. We're going to be talking about first-party data management, identity resolution, obviously GA4, web speed, customer experience. We're going to be talking about applications of AI. Uh, definitely excited about hearing from some of the dealers who are doing some more advanced things to leverage these new technologies. And of course, love the fact that uh, so many people have joined the Auto Genius community to collaborate, to, you know, really envision a new future for automotive retail. Yeah. And for those we already of have you a Slack community set up or a little month. mini channel for, for, for the event. So we'll be All there. right. Uh, yeah. Love it. Yes. Please encourage uh, the members of Auto Genius to come out. Um, you have a discount code that you can share uh, with all members of Auto Genius. And more importantly, this year, when you purchase your ticket to DMSC, you have access to four online courses. Um, those courses are Modern Internet Lead Handling Process, uh, led by my brother, Glenn. I'm doing one on first-party data management and CDPs. Mm -hmm. Sarah's doing an update on social media, paid advertising, and Sean's doing an update on Google Ads and, and the pro proper configurations to really leverage that ad budget. But it all comes down to... All of these ad strategies are driving people to your website. And if your website isn't creating that first class experience, well, a lot of waste there. And that's why I'm super excited for Speed Layer. And if this is the first time you're listening to a podcast, you should know that there are hundreds of interviews with other automotive leaders, visionaries, and, and folks that are solving problems for automotive retail. So just search for the Brian Pash podcast and uh, listen in. This is part of a series on the road to DMSC. DMSC is June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in Austin, Texas. Go to digitalmarketingstrategies.org to get your tickets. And Ben, are you ready to have some amazing conversations in Austin with dealers this year? Look, I can't wait. It's one of my favorites. Uh, that and MRC are like some of the best, uh, most progressive conversations I'll have all year. So I'm super pumped. Right. Well, uh, thanks for joining, Ben. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And um, if you can't make it out to DMSC in Austin in June, as Ben mentioned, don't forget the Modern Retailing Conference in November in beautiful Palm Beach, Florida. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time on another podcast interview.